Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about a common class B output stage, which is the push-pull configuration. Notice I have drawn a sample BJT push-pull uh, configuration there. It consists of uh, two transistors, an MPN transistor labeled QN and a PMP transistor labeled QP, which are connected to a positive and negative supplies respectively, plus VCC and minus VEE. There's an input signal V in, which is being applied simultaneously to the basis of the two transistors, and the output voltage V out is taken out of the node where both emitters are connected. And then there is a load resistor connected to uh, the output node RL. Now, if you remember, a characteristic of the class B output stage configuration or class B operation is that the transistor conducts for only half a cycle. And we can see that that is the case here. Each one of the transistors is going to conduct for uh, half a cycle and be in cutoff or turned off for the other half of the cycle. So if we imagine an input signal, uh, which is sinusoidal as um, drawn there with a positive half cycle labeled in green and the negative half cycle labeled in orange, uh, you will see that during the positive half cycle, QN will be conducting um, I'm sourcing the current that's needed for the load and QP will be in cutoff, whereas during the negative half cycle, the opposite thing is true. Um, QP is going to be in conducting because um, essentially you're going to have the base emitter junction forward bias for QP. So QP will be conducting, QN will be in cutoff. And so QP essentially will be sinking uh, the current that's coming from the load for negative signals. So we can uh, also represent that via the voltage transfer characteristic, uh, where we can see, as I have labeled on the right hand side there, uh, if we plot V out versus V in, we can see that for positive input voltages, um, V in is positive or V out, excuse me, is positive. And so there's a positive slope there. And for negative input voltages, V out is negative. So essentially it follows V in. But notice that in order for uh, the input voltage to uh, forward bias the base emitter junction, uh, that input voltage needs to exceed uh, the turn on voltage for the transistor. And for a silicon transistor, that's going to be around 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. And so you can, you can see there that the output voltage um, only starts becoming, only starts following V in after V in has exceeded 0.7 volts on the positive side, or after V in becomes lower than negative 0.7 volts on the low side. So we could represent that as uh, when V in is greater than 0.7 volts, we will have uh, QN is conducting and QP is in cutoff. When V in is less than negative 0.7 volts, we have the opposite. QN is in cutoff and QP is the one that's conducting. But notice that there is a region um, where V in is between minus 0.7 volts and 0.7 volts, where both transistors are in cutoff. None of them is conducting. Uh, that's referred to as the dead band region. And so this region here. That will be the dead band region. And again, it corresponds to the region where uh, V in is in between minus 0.7 volts and 0.7 volts. Now, the effect of that dead band region, uh, we can see it in the plot directly underneath the time domain plot of V out. Uh, we can see that instead of a sinusoidal signal around the zero uh, crossing points, we have that flattening of the sinusoidal signal. And so that's essentially distortion in our output signal, uh, which is referred to as crossover distortion. And so that will be a, a drawback of the class B configuration. <clears throat> And we will see later on some techniques to avoid that crossover distortion or to uh, to do away with it. 
But for now, let's examine the class B configuration a little bit more detail. Let's go ahead and do some power calculations to see how uh, it compares in terms of power efficiency to the class A output stage. So we can see already in terms of uh, linearity is going to be less linear than the class A output stage because of the crossover distortion problem. 